What's up everybody? So today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you two formulas, actually three formulas. There's gonna be a bonus one at the end, but the two main ones that I'm gonna be showing you are the upper formula and the lower formula. And this is gonna be a very useful if you are using some automations, you want to make sure you have the correct data in the correct place that the user input is correct. And so I'm gonna show you how to do all of that using some simple data cleansing formulas that I learned back when I went to school. So, and I'm gonna show you those now. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. And what we do is we help business owners probably just like you, help them optimize their information systems. So in stuff like Airtable, Asana, Slack, as well as like Zapier and Integromat to really connect all of those systems together and make it work really well for you, the client. So if you're interested in that, you can check out the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. But without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. So here we have our Airtable base right here. And as you can see, there's some different types of data in here. So there's some, there's a formula here and you can see most all of these are proper. And that is like proper would mean that like the first letter is capitalized of each word, but no other letters cap capitalized in each word. And so you can see all of that. You can see there's a single line text, some linked fields, a checkbox, and email. And the one that I really want to harp on is email because when you deal with people, the most common unique identifier that I think works really well is the email. And the reason why that is is because in the email, like I have an email that is shared with nobody else. I have multiple emails that are just linked to me. So if you can, a lot of times in automations, you're gonna be wanting to like find a record that matches conditions. So if you need to find someone's specific record for themselves, especially in Zapier, you want to make sure that whoever put that there in the first place is entering the right data as well as when they maybe submit the new piece of data that they're entering the same piece of data. And so with just using a few of these really simple formulas in your workflow, you can really save yourself a lot of time when you're trying to link some of these records up to make that data the exact same without creating too much data redundancy in your database. So the one that I'm going to show you, and this is the one that I think you'll probably use far more often, is the lower formula. So the example would be is if I, actually I think I can just change these. So if I just say this one is Judith at example, Dot com versus the lowercase j. If somebody types their name in, and, or if somebody types in their email and they have this one right here, but in our actual in our database it has the lowercase j, it's not going to link up correctly. So what you want to do is when you're importing data, you want to run a few of these formulas on it. And a lot of times you might do this in something like Microsoft Excel but you can just do them directly in Airtable once you import your data. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna insert a field to the right here of wherever your email is. And so for this one, you're just going to come down and you're gonna create a new formula, and this formula is going to be lower. So what the lower formula does is you just type in lower. All it does is, if I type in a space here, you can see it, so you have your lower formula and then within the two parentheses of the lower formula, you just have the string that you want to reference. So you can, like it has in here, it has like the quote and then a string and then an end quote and then the end parentheses, and it'll return that in lowercase. But what you can do here instead is just reference a field. So for us, we're going to reference email. And so now for email, no matter how they input it in the form or wherever this data originally came from, if we have Judith with a capital J, it'll now put that in lowercase. And if we customize this to upper, the same thing would happen. So if we change this to upper and we add the email in there, we can see that now everything will be upper. So whether you do it one way or the other doesn't particularly matter, but what you would want to make sure to have in here is probably the lower one so that when somebody enters their name, it's taking the lowercase version of that and trying to find the lowercase version of the one in your database. That way you're gonna have stuff link up just that many more times. Now, that's how to do the lower and the upper. The last formula that I wanna mention in here is one that's really good for data cleansing and it's something that you can just wrap that other formula in. So say you are using the lower formula for email so you're using the lower formula and you have email in here. 
that's this is exactly what you would have. You would have this right here. So Judith would be taken down to Judith at example.com. Well, one thing that you can do, because sometimes, and this is a lot of times when you're trying to import data and stuff, it's it can be very hectic if people include like a, even just a simple space after their email. Now, a lot of these softwares like Airtable and some of these other ones, they're getting smarter and sometimes they're removing a space or they're not counting it as part of it if there's a space at the end. But what you can do is you can just to make, again, make this that much more clear to the processor behind this on your computer, you can wrap this function, just type in the word trim and put a parentheses in that. And I'm actually gonna come in here and show you. So if I just do that and then delete those parentheses. So if you wrap your lower formula and a trim formula, you can see trim is just set up the exact same way and you can just click save here. So now it's hard to show the example here, but if you had somewhere in here with like a space after it or a space before, what it'll do is that trim formula will take those spaces and they'll delete them. So if there's a space in the middle, it won't. Like if I trimmed this instead, if I just change this in here, it won't take out the spaces in the middle, but it will take out the leading and the ending spaces. So if I type in name and organization here, it might make everything lowercase, but it won't take out the spaces in the middle. So that's one way to do it. I think this is very good. Like I said, if you have like an automation and you wanna make sure that you're linking the data up to the right place, just use this lower formula and probably a trim formula too, just to add that much more security for when you're putting these emails in here. But that's my recommendation for the day. And if you like this video, you'd probably like this video right here. It's gonna be all about the if formula. So it's gonna include all of the logical expression that you really need to know to get started with the if formula. And it's gonna include something most beginners probably don't know. So it's a really good tutorial. I highly encourage you to go watch it. It's all about the if formula and Airtable. So without further ado, I'll see you there. And I hope you have a great day. Click on that end screen right there to go get that if formula tutorial. And I'll see you there.